Let's start with a scenario where on day one, we purchase a unit and it costs us $2. Day two, we purchase the same item and it cost us $3. Day three, same thing except it cost us $4. Day four, same thing except it cost us five. And day five, we purchase the same item and it costs us $6. Under a perpetual inventory system, every time that we made the purchase, we would debit inventory and credit cash or accounts payable or however we're actually paying for the amount. And so on day one, we would have debited inventory for $2 and credited cash for $2, day two, so on and so forth, which means over the five days, we would have debited inventory for $20 and credited cash for $20. So now sitting in inventory, on the balance sheet, we have $20 worth of inventory. Okay, on day seven, let's say, we sell two units. And let's say we sell them for $10 each. That's our selling price. So debit cash for $20 or accounts receivable and credit sales for $20. Under the FIFO method perpetual, we also need to be doing the debit to cost of goods sold and the credit to inventory as we are tracking our inventory as we go along. But the question is, how much do we need to debit and credit that for? Well, we're selling two units and we're using the FIFO method. So to the first and first out method, the first units purchased are the first units sold. So we're selling two units, so that would be the first two units. So we're selling the unit that cost us $2 and the unit that cost us $3. So in total, our cost of goods sold and inventory is $5 which means $5 has been removed from inventory, leaving us $15 left in inventory, which is what makes up purchase on day three, four, and five, those three units total to $15. Okay, now we go to day 10, let's say, and we purchase another unit, same units, uh, $7 cost us, day 11, um, and day 12, $8 and $9 respectively. So again, we're purchasing units, so it goes into our inventory and we will credit cash or accounts receive, or accounts payable. And this totals the seven, well, one day it would be the seven, the next day it would be the eight, the next day it would be the nine. So in total, $24 has been added to our inventory. So again, if we want to track what's going on in our inventory, we now have $39 worth of inventory. And let's say on day 15, we sell another unit, just one for $10. Again, our journal entry, debit cash or accounts receivable for $10, credit sales for $10. That's great, but again, we're under the perpetual method. So we need to also have our movement going from cost of goods sold to cost of goods sold from inventory. And again, we have to know what cost to use. Again, we're on the FIFO method. So we go back to what units we have on hand, which is the unit purchased at $4, $5, $6, $7, $8, and $9. Well, the first unit purchase that we still have is this unit purchased on day three for $4. So therefore this journal entry is going to be for $4. We've removed that from inventory, which means left in inventory is $35 worth of inventory. And that is the $5 plus the $6 plus the $7 plus the $8 plus the $9. And that should also equal $35. So under the FIFO method of inventory, you would record it this way, such that always the first units that you purchased are the first units that are sold. Let's now do the same example using the perpetual method, but the average method. So again, on day one, we purchase a unit, it costs two, day two, day three, day four, day five. So again, that's $20 worth of inventory. We're still using the perpetual method. So we will still do debit inventory and credit cash or accounts payable for the $20. But again, it would be done every day. The first day would be $2, the second one, 
and so on and so forth because it's perpetually updating our system. And then here on day seven, we sell two units. And again, we sell them for $10 each. The sales entry is going to be exactly the same. Debit cash or accounts receivable for $20 and credit sales for $20. You could also credit revenue, perfectly acceptable. Again, we're doing the perpetual method. So we need to move our inventory over to cost of goods sold. So everything's reflected properly on the balance sheet in the income statement. Again, the question is, what's the dollar value that should be used? Okay, well, we're using the average method now. So we have to average the costs of all our units. So on hand, we have $20 worth of inventory. That is for five units. So 20 divided by five is $4. So that means the average at this point is $4 per unit. We sold two units, so that means $8 is what has been sold and needs to be removed from inventory. So we will credit inventory for the $8 and debit cost of goods sold for $8. And so what we have left in inventory is $12. That is three units still left. So three times the four is 12, which does coincide with what's in our account, which is good. Okay, now on day 10, we purchased some more units, $7, $8, $9 on day 11 and day 12. Again, we're going to be updating inventory as we go along. So debit inventory, credit cash or accounts payable. And again, it's going to be happening every day, but in total, it's going to be $24 that has gone into inventory. So now we have $36 sitting in inventory. On day 15, we sell one unit. We sell it for $10. So debit cash or accounts receivable for the $10. Credit sales for the $10. And at the same time, we need to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the inventory movement. So we now have $36 in inventory and that is represented by six units. So 36 divided by six is $6 now is the average cost per unit. We only sold one unit. So therefore our cost of goods sold is six and that's what gets moved over. So now sitting in inventory is $30 worth of inventory. $6 is your average and we have five units left at inventory. Five times six is 30. Moving on to your periodic inventory, let's do the FIFO method. Again, same information, day one. So in total, we have $20 of inventory that's been purchased. The journal entries under the periodic method would be debit purchases, credit cash or AP, for the $20. And you could be doing that journal entry daily as well. You could wait till you needed to add up some, um, but same sort of thing. On day seven, you sell two units. We sell them for $10 each. So debit cash for $10 or accounts receivable, credit sales for $10. We're using the periodic method, so we do not update the inventory as we go along. We move down to day 10, where we purchase some more units, $7, $8, and $9. Again, we're gonna debit purchases for the $24 and credit cash or accounts payable. And then on day 15, we sell one more unit, debit cash or accounts receivable for the $10, credit sales for $10. And again, we're using the periodic method, so no information is needed for the movement of inventory. 
So you would wait till at month end or whenever you do a count. You will see you have five units on hand using the FIFO method. You could work out the cost of goods that you could possibly have sold, the cost of goods available for sale. You can count that by your purchases or by how many units you purchased. So you had purchased five, six, seven, eight units. So you purchased eight units, you count, you get five units, so you must have sold three units. Under the FIFO method, you could work out based on the count that five units, well, that's got to be these three units under FIFO because the last units left are the ones that are still in inventory, plus these two units here. So you can assign the cost accordingly. So those five units is going to be the seven, eight, nine, five, and six, which should total up to $35. So that would be your ending count. At that point, you would do your journal entries. Let's assume we had nothing in inventory to start out with, so we don't have to do anything for the beginning inventory entry. So we would debit inventory for $35 and credit ending inventory to account for the movement of inventory um, from, for the month based on the count. Finally, let's look at using the periodic and the average method. Again, we're going to use the same information. Again, we're into the periodic method, so debit purchases, credit cash or accounts payable. Oh, we'll probably do it every day, but in total it's $20. On day seven, you sell some inventory. You will debit cash or accounts receivable and credit sales. On day 10, 11, and 12, you purchase some more inventory. So again, debit purchases credit cash or accounts payable. That totals to 24. Again, you probably would do it on an individual basis. And then day 15, you make another sale for $10. So you do the sales side of the entry. When you get to the end of the month or the end of a period of time, you go into account you do your count and you find out that there are five units. You go and look at what's in your purchases account. The $20 and the 24, which equals $44. You also figure out how many units you purchased during the month, which you work out to be eight units. So 44 divided by eight is $5.50 per unit. So therefore your ending inventory is going to be the five units at $5.50, $27.50. And therefore you do your journal entry, debit to inventory for $27.50, credit ending inventory for $27.50. And again, if there was beginning inventory, you would also move that out at the same time.